Studio. Okay. okay, so let's explain some things. Well, looky there. There's the answer to Paul's question. The minimum and maximum values are called the extreme values or extrema, and the process of finding them is called optimization. Okay, it's optimization. What? That blonde-headed guy with glasses, that stop guy, he's always talking, and he's got a kid in his hair. Oh, no, it's not Bill Nye. Bill Nye's. Yeah, so walking by all the people. Oh, okay. My bad. Or Tim. Okay, sometimes we're interested in finding the min or max for x in a particular interval i rather than on the entire domain of f of x. So we're, instead of looking at the entire function, we're just zooming in on a piece of it. Okay, so we have our definition there. <clears throat> and this is just the technicalities of it. Okay, f of c is the minimum of f on the interval if the y value is less than all the other y values in the interval. Kind of makes sense, right? It's the minimum if it's less than all the other y values. It's the maximum if it's greater than all the other y values, okay? So, um, not every function has a minimum or a maximum value. For example, f of x equals x. If we were not talking about a particular interval, f of x equals x, it doesn't have a maximum or a minimum because it increases in one direction, it decreases in another direction, there's no maximum or minimum. Now, if we zoom in on an interval, we can talk about it having a maximum or a minimum, but just over its entire domain, we can't. All right, so let's look at some examples of uh, some functions that don't necessarily have particular extreme values. So looking at this first function, this function has a discontinuity at C. It does not have a maximum on this interval. Because, okay, if that were not a whole, that would be the maximum, yeah. right? Okay, well, we cannot identify the maximum because of this whole idea of we can get infinitely close to that point, but we can't actually equal that point. So we cannot pinpoint a maximum value right here. Okay, there is no maximum value on this interval. So we can also like 2.99 times x. Yeah. Because what what is the maximum value? That may be where it occurs, but what is the maximum value? Yeah. Doesn't work. Okay. Now this does have a minimum value. Okay. It has a uh, minimum value at A of 1. Okay? At A of 1, the value of 1. Um, I will try and emphasize that distinction because that's very important. Okay? Uh, the second example here. This is a continuous function on this interval. Okay? On this interval, it is continuous. But it has no minimum or maximum on this open interval. Because over here on the left, it has a hole. At the end point of A, on the right, it looks like a vertical asymptote at B. So this has no maximum nor minimum. No extreme values on this one. Now, part C says that every continuous function on a closed interval has both a minimum and a maximum on that interval. So they're showing you here, here is your minimum. Whatever this x value is and whatever its y value is, this is the minimum value. It's less than all the other y values. Here's your maximum value. Okay, This one's on the end point. Now, there is another maximum. This is what we would call a local maximum. It's not the absolute maximum. This is the absolute max. This would be a local max. It's on an open interval. It does not include A. Is there a reason that the A and B are where the X lie? <clears throat> um, a and B is referring to where the X values start and where they end. A B is, is referring to all X values. 
it's a minimum on the interval. Okay. Eight. Okay. It's not saying a minimum at. We don't know what the specific x is not. So how do you write up maximum or backward maximum or the area will be phased? B or whatever? <laughs> well, the max would be f of b. Yeah, whatever it is. The max is always referring to the y. Okay. So you always put the absolute one? Yeah. I mean, it depends on how it's asked. If it says what, what is the max, you do What is the max, max, then it's referring to the absolute maximum. So, okay, let's say there was, um, I don't know, a C between A and B, you know what I'm saying? Like at that minimum point on uh -huh. that one. So then it says what is the maximum on A to C? So is that local maximum? Yes, from A to C, if we cut it off right there, then yes, the local max would become the absolute max on that end. Yes. What do you do if it's like you got two pumps and both pumps are like on the same level? If they have the same y value, then they're both, it has two maximum two values. Absolute. Yeah, two absolute maximum values. Yeah. Good questions. Good questions. Okay. Here is something you've got to know, the extreme value theorem, okay? The extreme value theorem. What the extreme value theorem says, if your function is continuous on a closed interval, it must be a closed interval from A to B, then f of x has both a minimum and a maximum on that interval, okay? If it is continuous on a closed interval, then it has both a max and a min. No, it's not the entire function. It just means you include the endpoints. You include the endpoints. So it's not like B right here. This was an open interval. We didn't include A. We didn't include B. Not that it really matters in this case. Um, but like, okay, let's look at this one, okay? Let's look at this one. If this were not a closed interval, right now this is a closed interval because it includes A and B. If we did not include the endpoints A and B, this would not have a minimum either. Can you make your final question? No. That's not my final No. Close means you include the endpoints. Whatever the value of the endpoint is, is up for consideration. So it has infinity to start the end. Yes. Brackets mean close, means you include. Parentheses means you do not include. So what it means is different. So okay, so if this picture right here, this first one, if this were an open interval, meaning you cannot use the point at A, you pick up that it's infinitely close to A, you can't, but you do not include A, then this would not have a minimum for the same reason that it doesn't have a maximum. Because we can't identify, if that were an open circle right there, we could not identify what minimum value so it is. Means, okay, so close means that the whole is zero. Is that what you're trying to say? On the endpoints, yes. yes. And then open means the whole is not going on the end. Right. There should be open circles on the endpoints on an open interval. I mean, they're not technically holes. They're the endpoints. You're not including their value in consideration. Okay, so uh, the extreme value theorem is like our intermediate value theorem. We call it an existence theorem. Okay, what that means is that it guarantees the existence of something but it doesn't tell you how to find it, okay? Remember the intermediate value theorem? Um, we could use it in several different contexts, but uh, most likely it was used to show that the function equaled zero on an interval. If we could show that it was negative on one side and positive on the other side, well, then it had to hit zero somewhere in between, but it didn't tell us how to find where it hit zero. It just told us that it did hit zero. Same thing here. The extreme value theorem doesn't tell us what the maximum and minimum values are, it just says that they exist. Okay, it just says that they exist. Um, here's another 
definition for local extrema. Okay, um, it's a local minimum at an x value. I need to see. Okay, uh, it's the minimum value. It has a local minimum if that value is the minimum on some of the minimum. Okay, so let, let's look if that's confusing just in words. <clears throat> um, so let's look at these, these two pictures here. Okay, let's look at these two pictures. This first one, illustration A, there's no interval. Okay, there's no interval here. Uh, it just gives us the function. We're looking at the function in its entirety. Uh, now there is a typo on that. I got this out of the textbook, but there is a typo. This would be the absolute minimum. It is not, I mean, technically absolute minimums are local minimums as well, but it's best to describe that as the absolute minimum because it is the minimum value of this function. Okay, so that's the first one is an absolute minimum. This value is a local maximum. Okay, it reaches a peak, uh, but it's not the absolute maximum value of the function because obviously on endpoints we go beyond that. Yeah, how come on the way that would be a the value is on it's on that? Well, this is for all row number. This is the entire domain right here. But yes, that would be an open interval from negative infinity uh, to positive infinity. Or a closed interval. Then A over here would be that. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that's what I think. Okay. So yes, the okay. let's close this off. Okay. Let's close this off. So, just based on the pictures we've looked at,